Welcome back to another tutorial on Brizzy for Beginners. We are going to build another hero image in this tutorial. In the previous tutorial, you had learned about blocks within Brizzy and that elements are the building blocks of the blocks and how to bring them in and how to do some basic styling. This is another hero image and there are four things that we will roll out within this tutorial extra. First of all, we're going to make this full height. You can see that this block stretches all the way from the bottom of my screen to the top. Second thing is we're going to do some animation. If I reload this page, you will see how my title subheading and my button comes in with some animation. And then two new elements that we will bring in, this line here that is a divider, and then the button over here. With that, we will also look at this hover effect for the button. Let's close this and go open a new page. In your WordPress, you go to Pages, Add New, and we're going to give this one more or less the same title, Level 1, 02, and this is also a Euro image, let's call it Full, to give us some indication. To get it ready, go to the top here, click on Publish, and then a second Publish, and from here, Edit with Brizzy. As these tutorials progress, certain things I'm going to start skipping, which you should know by then. The other thing for people who may have already been exposed to Brizzy is that you will look at certain things and think, JP, why are you doing it like that? Well, there's a little bit method on my madness. We are building it up. On the other hand, I may just overlook it because there are usually more than one way to do the same thing within page builders. And we build up our own workflow. That could be the reason why I didn't feature that. But eventually we'll go through all the features, all the elements so that you can begin developing your own style and your own workflow. So let's begin at the beginning by bringing in a new block. So we click here on start building your page and we click on add a blank block. I'm going to delete these two columns by right click, delete, right click and delete. Go to my block up here on the settings icon. I click on the toolbar slides out and I go to my background on my image and I choose this one. You can find the link to this image in the description below. Click on select and it brings it in. The next step is to make this a full height block. Click on settings and then you see the option over here to say full height. I'm going to say yes and Bazinga and goes all the way to full height. The other thing that you saw is that we had an overlay to this image. The overlay is applied through this here called colors. Click on it and we choose white. The white is applied already at a setting up here, I think of about 93, 92%. This is a little bit too strong, though be careful not to drag it all the way down because a lot of people often make this mistake by bringing it all the way down too low and then you cannot see the text carefully. So let's grab the slider and we go up here and yeah, let's go for 71%. Looks good here. And now we've got a nice overlay to our block. We identified those four elements that we will be working with. It's going to be a text, text, divider, and a button. Let's drag in our elements. I'm going to drag in the text, which will be my heading, then the line element, which is my divider, then another text element, drag and drop until you see the thick gray line where you want to drop it, and then the button under that. Let's begin working on these. And I start at the top with the topic, which is yoga. Click on topography, the T, and we put it on Playfair display. We're going to increase the size. I'm just going to type in around 150 pixels and it will make it quite large. Next, give it a color and I'm going to give it a custom color. And that code is 86572A. And just like before, I'm going to highlight it, control A, and then control copy because I'm going to use this color settings again later. Let's align it. And you do that by this alignment icon here. If you click once on it, put it in the center on the right, justification, left and center again. You just keep clicking on it. Reduce the space next. I'm going to go back to topography and then line height, put it down at one. Next, 
element is our line. Just click on the line and the toolbar will pop up. Let's start from the left with the line. The size will allow you to set the thickness of this line. I'm going to leave it at two. Next is the color. Click in the custom color and paste that code. And it will also be brown though you won't be able to see it that clearly. And then we go over to settings. Here we will reduce the width to around uh, just 18%. Let's make it less, 12%. I think that looks better. Now we need a little bit of space between that line and our text element. The text element has a very nice feature. So click again on the text element, go to settings, and up here you will see gap below. Let's increase it uh, around 22 pixels. That will give us some nice space between the line and the title. Our subheading text, click on that. Let's put it also on Playfair Display in Topography. And then for the color, let's make that this dark black that you can see here by clicking on this color swatch all the way to the left. I'm going to center align it again by clicking on the alignment. What I want to do now is to bring the, this text a little bit closer to each other so we can have two lines. Now, many people will click here and maybe press enter and it will give you that, but I'm not going to do that. What I'll do is I'm going to reduce the content width. Now there is a function within the block where you can reduce the content width. Let me show you, go up here to your block settings and then you go to your settings and you will see here width. Currently it is boxed. And currently you see these margins on the left and the right. This is the 100% boxed width that you see for all these elements. If I grab the slider and I drag it in like this, you will see they have decreased. Increased here, decreased here. If I keep doing that, you will see the text being squashed as I reduce the boxed width. I am going to advise against doing this and I'll leave it for now. And then when we get to responsiveness in the mobile view, I will show you why this is probably not the better option for you at this moment and rather to use padding. But we'll leave it for now as is. Let's go style our button next and apply also some hover effect to the button. Click in the button and then to change the text, double click on the text or highlight it. And in capitals, I type join retreat. That's not capitals, join retreat. And then let's go and style our topography first. The T for topography, which means font. I'm going to put that also on Playfair display. Increase it around to 16. And I think the letter spacing at three is good for me. We can leave all of that. Next, let's style the color. And when you click on this, you will see up here, there is these little flaps, little tags that come out on the left. The top is the normal view. The default view, when people come to your page, that is what they will see. The one below that is hover view. And that is when a cursor goes over that element, what will happen to it in its hover state? Let's click on the top one to make sure you've got the default view and we change the color. Double click again there, and then paste the color that we had copied earlier. You will notice if I hover over it now, it turns blue because that is the default color set in hover as well. So you have to go and change the hover state as well. Click here on the hover tag, and then again down here, click on all of those elements and paste your color code. You will see when you hover over the button now, it goes slightly lighter. Why does that occur? Well, in your hover state, you will see that here, the slider on the right, your transparency slider has been lowered or opacity slider. So let's even decrease that more. So when you hover over it, you can see quite an effect to show you that you are actually activating or hovering over this element. Back to our default view and everything looks good enough for me here. I want to remove the icon. And for that, we go all the way to the left and click here on the button. Up here, icon, and we click here on the little X to remove it. And now we just have the button as is. You can click anywhere outside to have a look at how does it display at this moment. Let's save our work with Command and Control S, and then let's go and preview it so we can see if it looks good enough. We've got a full height block hero image, a nice title here, our line divider, our text over here, 
and the button. The button is too close to this text. So I'm going to fix that. Let's close out here by bringing in a spacer. Click on Add Elements. Grab your spacer, drag and drop until you see the thick gray line between the subheading and your button element and drop it. Let's click outside to see how it looks. And I think it's a little too big. So what I'm going to do is click within the spacer, grab the blue little dot at the bottom, the handlebar, and just decrease it a little like that. Let's save it again, Control S, and then to see if it looks good, click on the preview button and view it in the next tab in your browser. This looks good. And in level two, we will show you how to add links to these buttons so that they can take you to other places on your site, as well as maybe open a contact form. Close out and go back. I showed you earlier that we can add animation. Let's go to our yoga and we click on yoga, settings, more settings, and then go to advanced. And here you will see it gives you the option to add entrance animation. Click on it, and as you scroll through this, you can see there are quite a number of options for animation that you can apply. I'm going to look for this one that is called Fade Up. Fade Up, like that. And I'm going to give it a slower duration. Currently, it will take one second to complete. I'm going to increase it a little bit to, let's say, 1.7. That makes it a little bit slower, more visual. Let's do the same for this text element over here. Click on it, settings, more settings, advanced. We click here on entrance animation, scroll down for fade up, fade in up. And for this one, I'm going to give it a little bit of an extra delay so that it will come after the yoga. So the delay for this one, I'll make it about 1.4. Just, just a little bit of a delay. Then for the Join Retreat button, click on that. Settings, Advanced, and then let's just give this a normal fade in. There's fade in, but we give it a delay of about two seconds, which means that after people open your page, it's going to take two seconds before this appears. Let's click here and then update it. Let's go preview our animation. And it looks good, except for that line. Looks a little bit weird, stuck there in the middle. So we have to give that some animation as well. Close it, go back to our line element, click on it, settings, more settings, advance, go to our entrance animation, and let's also say fade in, just a fade in, and we leave it at that. Let's save it again and preview. And you will notice often I go back and forth, back and forth. It's just one of those things that you have to get used to. Often when you watch any video on YouTube or anywhere else online, it will look like things just work perfectly. In real life, it never works like that. It is a constant battle back and forth, back and forth to get things to work. And like I've mentioned in the previous video, we would like it to be a precise science, but it doesn't always work like that. You have to bring your creative side as well and judge things with your eye. Let's click here on the preview button to see if those fadings and animations work. Right, some nice animation applied there. You may think again, we are done. And I will remind you that we are not done. You have to go back and you have to look at responsiveness, which includes tablet and which includes your phone view. So let's close here and let's go have a look at how this will display on your tablets and phones. Click here on the desktop and then we choose tablet. And already I see something that bothers me a little bit. And that is that this box is too narrow at this moment. Because we had set the box width so narrow, it is squashing everything here in our tablet view. And if you go to your mobile view, it's even worse. It looks like this. So we don't want that. Let's go back to tablet view. And now I'll show you why it wasn't a good idea to reduce the block width in our block settings. Go up here to our block, click on it, click on settings, and you will see it only has padding here. And this padding is only applied top and bottom. So you don't have control over responsiveness of the block width in tablet and mobile view. So you are set with that. There's nothing you can do. If you go to mobile view and you try to increase that, go again up to your block, 
click on settings and you will see you only have the option for the padding and again only padding top and bottom so there's no way you can increase the width of this block so we go back to desktop go again here to your block settings to settings and increase your width all the way to 100 percent so how can we achieve the same effect as we have by reducing it here with the width of the box container. We're going to do that, put it at 100% again, by adding padding within this element. So click inside this text element, go to settings, more settings, and then here under padding, we only want to increase the padding on the left and the right, not top and bottom. Currently, if I grab the slider, it will do all four sides, which is what I don't want. So put it down at zero and decouple them up here by clicking on this icon. So let's increase it like this on the right. And then on the left, the same amount, 56 pixels, and we see how that looks. It hasn't done much. Let's increase it more. I'm going to put it all the way to 100 and all the way to 100 here. It still hasn't done much. So you have to take up that number quite a lot. What happens if it reaches 100? Well, you click inside it, double click, and you type your number like 150. Let's do it down here as well, 150, and still nothing. So let's increase it even more, 200 and 200. I've played around with it and I found that 350 for the right and 350 for the left just works right for me. Now I have squashed it by increasing the padding on the left and the right. Just also note that currently it is set on this little blue highlighted pixels, but next to it, there is also the option for percentage. And I will show you in the future tutorials what we can do with percentage. Now we have achieved exactly the same effect like we did when we had taken this settings and reduced the box width up here. Let's now go into the tablet view and see how that looks. We go into the tablet view and we see that the padding has been removed. So we add it back for our tablet responsiveness by clicking inside that text element, settings, more settings. And then we decouple the padding again up here and we increase it here from the right. I'm going to put it at 100 and the left 100 as well. In fact, Let's increase that to 150 on each side. I'm clicking in it, highlighting it, and then just typing in 150. That looks good. Let's go to the phone, click on mobile, and that is already good enough for me. If you want to add some space there, you can. Often on mobile, we are not that sensitive about the space and padding on the left and the right. We are more flexible in allowing the element to stretch all the way to the end of the screen. But again, it is your choice if you would like to add some padding there on the left and the right. Let's just make sure it looks good again from the top to the bottom desktop. That's how we would like it to look. Tablet. And then mobile. We've designed a nice hero image here full height with an overlay. We've applied some animation to our elements as they enter. We added a line here, which is a divider between these two text elements. And we brought in a button that when you hover over it, it will change the color, indicating to your user and your visitor that they are actually hovering over the button. Before we wrap up our tutorial, let's save our work. Command on a Mac, Control on a keyboard and S and you will see the spinning wheel here in the bottom right hand corner. And then let's preview our hard work on the front end. And now you know how to make a full height hero image in Brazil.